Today, using Apple Motion, we're gonna create this lower third graphic for your videos. Also, if you're a patron, you'll be able to download a fully customizable version of this for your own projects. First thing we wanna do is open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna select the Final Cut title and set our duration to five seconds. You can also set your preset and frame rate to whatever your typical project is at. From there, we're gonna push Open. Selecting the title background and type text here layers, we're just gonna delete those. Then we're gonna come down and find our rectangle tool and create a basic rectangle. Going up to the inspector, we'll go down to the outline and disable that. Then we'll jump into the geometry settings where we'll find the size. Go ahead and set your size to something like 1000 and the height to 150. After that, we can select our arrow tool and get this roughly into position. Now this is going to be our base layer. Any animations we apply to this are going to apply to the other layers. So I'm actually going to rename this to just be base. We can also rename the group base group. Selecting our base layer, we're gonna go over to our properties and find the position parameters. Click on this down arrow and find the X value. We'll click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior and select overshoot. From there, click and drag on your start value until the rectangle is completely off of the screen. Then coming down, we can set stuff like the ramp duration to be a little bit shorter, and that's gonna give us a lot more momentum in the animation. And we can find our cycles and set that down to one. So if I push play, we should have this slow animation of this popping into frame. Now to speed it up, we'll select our overshoot and we'll go in about one second. Then we're gonna push O to trim that down. So if we push play, the animation should be quite a bit faster. From here, we can actually collapse this base group for now, select it and push K. This is going to create a clone layer, which is going to copy all of the animations and colors and anything we apply to that base layer. With this clone layer selected, we're actually going to disable the base group just so the clone layer is completely by itself. Now we wanna be able to recolor this, so selecting the clone layer, we'll go up to filters, go down to color, and select colorize. Now we can change this remap white to whatever value we like. Now I'm gonna leave the base one as white. So with that clone layer selected, we can push Command D. Now we can rename the original clone layer to be white, and we can name the next layer to be red. And I'm just gonna kinda of copy some YouTube colors here. So we'll go to our colorize, find the remap white over to red. And so now we should have a white one and a red one. From there, we'll select the red color and push command D one more time. We'll find our colorize and set that to a dark gray. So now we have all three of these colors, but unfortunately they are all covering up each other at the moment. So selecting our red layer, we're gonna come down to the timeline and push command right arrow. And that will allow us to move it over in terms of singular frames. So I'm gonna move it over four frames. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to select the top layer and I'm gonna rename that to be dark gray. So selecting the dark gray layer, we'll push command and right arrow eight times now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at me, I can count. And so now if we push play, we should have this basic animation playing out. All three of the layers are kind of overlaying each other, but it's giving us this cool parallax effect and just a really nice fluid looking animation. Now I kind of want to 3D dimensionalize this a little bit and set these off in their stacks. So what I'm gonna do is actually increase the scale of our dark gray layer to 101% and decrease the scale of our white layer down to 90 9%. So if we look at our project now, you'll see how these are all slightly offset from each other, which I think gives it a really cool look. So now it's time to add in a little bit of text. So selecting the text tool with T, we can go ahead and click anywhere in our viewer to type in our text and I'll just write my name and then I'll select my arrow tool and click and drag that down into where I want the title to be. After that, we can go ahead and set the alignment to be centered and scale it up until it's fitting correctly. Let's find the end of the animation where we want the text to start appearing and I'm liking somewhere in here. So we're gonna select our text, push shift and left bracket and that is going to push it over in our timeline to where our playhead was. So now it won't appear until that moment. After that, we'll go up to our behaviors, select text basic and find something like arrange in or fade characters in. It's really up to you what you want the animation of this text to be but I really like how arrange in looks. 
So if I push play now, we can see that our text comes flying in right as that animation finishes out. Now, if it's coming up a little bit too late, we could even slide that over a few. So I'm gonna select the text layer and push command and left arrow to slide that back a couple frames and let's see how that looks. Very nice. So now we have our basic animation in, but what if we wanted the same animation to happen on the way out? Now there is this really great method. I believe it was discovered by Fox Mahoney. I might be wrong on that. So if somebody knows, please correct me down in the comments. But to achieve the effect of everything going in reverse, we'll go back down to our original base group. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, you can't really apply a reverse modifier very easily to the overshoot parameter. So we need to do this really quick workaround. Selecting that main base group, we're gonna push K. That's gonna create yet again another clone layer. This time with that clone layer selected, we're gonna push I. And that is going to trim up that clone layer. Then selecting the main base layer, we're gonna push O. So now we have the clone layer and original layer kind of trading off places. After that, we're gonna select this overshoot parameter, push Command C, then on our clone layer, we'll push Command V. From there, we can select this clone layer, find our X position, click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and this time, we're gonna select reverse. So now, it should play that overshoot in reverse animation. And from there, we can add the same out animation to our text layer. So selecting the Dylan Bates text, We'll go up to behaviors and we're gonna select text basic and select arrange out. Now I'm just gonna drag this arrange out animation to the point where I want the text to start disappearing somewhere in here maybe. It's really up to what you want. So that's fading out. And then on this last frame, make sure that text is selected and push O to trim it out. So if we push play, we should have this beautiful animation in, the text is set up, and then a beautiful animation out. Now, one last important factor is to tell Final Cut Pro what the timing of this animation needs to be. If we do not do this, the animation is going to either get really stretched out or really shrunk down depending on how long this title is in your Final Cut Pro project. So go ahead and go to the end of the beginning animation, push Shift M to add a marker. Double click that marker and change the type from standard over to build in optional. This will allow us to enable or disable the animation depending on what we want in Final Cut. After that, we can go to the end animation, push Shift M, add a marker, double click that and set it to build out optional. So now we have told Final Cut Pro how fast this animation needs to be and where it needs to loop in the middle. Once we've done that, we can push Command S to allow us to publish to Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna just call this FCB lower third, and we can change the category to whatever we like. I'll set it to tutorials and push publish. So now that we're in Final Cut Pro, we can just locate the title we have created, place it on our project like anything else, and if we push play, we can see it animates in beautifully, and it also animates out beautifully. If this video was helpful to you, you might want to check out this video where I show how to recreate the MKBHD intro from a couple of years ago. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.